Hello, I'm Paul Larson. Kids and even some adults have a tough time not crying while reading Bridge to Terabithia by Katherine Patterson. In this author visit, the Vermont writer tells us what motivated her to write such a sad story for young people. Your book, Bridge to Terabithia, was published in 1977, and it tells a story of fifth grader Jesse Ahrens and his female friend Leslie Burke, and one of those characters is tragically and unexpectedly killed in the story. But what a lot of people don't know is the genesis of the story. What inspired you to write this? Well, our son David's best friend when he was eight was a little girl named Lisa Hill, and she was struck and killed by lightning. and. It was out of that tragedy, trying to make some sense out of that tragedy, that I began to write the story. What kinds of things do people say when they meet you about Bridge to Terabithia and how it has moved them? Well, um, sometimes um, children particularly accuse me of murder because they have come to love Leslie Burke, and so they feel that I've done some terrible deed by, kill why did you kill Leslie Burke is a question I get a lot. Um, but I find that people who have had uh, tragedy in their own lives, and nearly every adult has, not every child yet, uh, the book means a great deal to them because they bring their own grief to the story. And uh, they enrich the story with their own experience. I completely agree with that. When I read the book, I just want Leslie to come back to life at the end. It's, it's just so horrific. <laughs> Why is it a good thing for children to be experiencing this kind of death while reading a novel? It's better than to experience it through a novel first, isn't it? Um, it's kind of a rehearsal for what all of us are going to have to face in our lives. We're all going to lose friends um, before we die. And actually, death is not the most painful way sometimes to lose a friend. Uh, but I've always felt that books can help you go through it vicariously. And I, I've, I've got a very touching letter from a young man who said that he, his, he was a college student and his best friend had been killed over the holidays. And he was so devastated that he went home and dug out his old copy of Bridge to Terabithia and read it again. And it, he just wanted me to know what a great comfort it had been to him. So that, that meant a great deal to me, that the book would still mean something. Uh, in that sort of situation. Your son, who had the friend who died so unexpectedly by lightning, how was he impacted by your writing this book? Well, at first it was very painful for him. Uh, I read it to him before I even sent it to my publisher because I thought he had a right to say whether or not he wanted me to publish this story because even though he's not Jesse Aarons, everybody would think he was and in a way he thinks he is too. Um, but he, he, when the book became suddenly very famous, he, he confessed to me that it, it, he was a little bit ashamed because he was getting to be famous because his best friend died. And it made him feel guilty that that would happen. I think for him, writing the screenplay and being so active in the production of the movie was a very healing experience, but it had taken many years for him to get to that point. Yeah, Walt Disney Pictures and Walden Media released the movie that your son had significant input into yeah. with the screenplay mm -hmm. and co-producing. Uh, yeah, he was one of the producers. Race to the end of the road. On your mark, set, go. What's your opinion of the movie? Well, I cry every time. I've seen it. I think six times, and I've cried every time. Um, we didn't win all the battles, but I think we won the major battles. Uh, we kept it really as close to the, the story as, as uh, was possible to do so. And I think people are genuinely moved when they see it, and that's what we hoped for. You mentioned battles. Was there anything some of the screenwriters were trying to do that you didn't agree with? Well, one of the early ideas was that she shouldn't die. I mean, it was such a downer for a child to die. Uh, couldn't she just break a leg? And David said, no. <laughs> and they said, how about a, comma, a coma? You know, good soap opera fashion. They go into a coma and whatever. And he said, no. And 
Uh, one reason he was very happy to have Walden Media behind him was because at that point Walden understood what he was trying to do and uh, he had some help from the Walden folks in, in battling those who would like to really change the book dramatically. Wesley. I think Hollywood buys the story because it's so good and then they say, but wait, we'll make it better <laughs> by changing it totally so you don't recognize it. And that's happened to so many of my friends who are writers who really just can't even bear to see the movies that have supposedly been based on their books. I think by the time actually Disney took on the project, it was pretty much settled that it would, it would be the story that the book tells. Um, there was some problems with how much special effects there would be and how much of a part of the movie that would be. But fortunately, uh, the budget was low and so we couldn't overdo the special effects. <laughs> Did the movie increase readership of the book? Oh, believe me. <laughs> I, I was on the New York Times bestseller list for a number of weeks uh, when the movie came out, even before the movie came out in anticipation of the movie. So uh, when people say that, that uh, people won't read the book after, if there's a movie. That's not true at all. Many, many more people read the book than had been reading it, although it's always been my best-selling book. You've received many awards and honors. You've received two Newbery Awards, the Hans Christian Andersen Award, the Astrid Lindgren Memorial Award in Sweden, and now you've just received a new title and a new job. Tell us about that. Well, can I flash my medal? Absolutely. Let's see Look at that. Hold it so you can get it on the camera there. Now, what is that? Well, it's the National Ambassador for Young People's Literature. I have to practice. <laughs> so you are newly named this. I'm newly named the National Ambassador for Young People's Literature for the United States. And what it means is that I'm to tell the whole country how important books for children are not only to encourage young people to read, but to encourage adults to read with their young people, um, to show their young people how important reading is, because I truly believe that without an informed, literate citizenry, democracy is doomed. Uh, we, can't, we can't find out what we need to know to be good citizens simply by watching our favorite TV station. Sorry about that. <laughs> Not even PBS. <laughs> we at PBS, we advocate literacy. Yes, absolutely. I know you do. <laughs> Why do you enjoy writing books so much? Oh, sometimes, some days I don't. <laughs> some days it seems like I should never have gotten into this. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but um, I love to tell stories, and uh, I love to figure things out by means of a story. And I think that's probably what it is. It's, and as in the case of Bridge to Terabithia, I, I, I had to make meaning out of that terrible tragedy that was so devastating to us. And uh, so I knew that a story was my way through that. And uh, I, think, I think that's what it is. It's finding meaning in things that seem not to have meaning or answering questions that I myself have. I think people think that when you write for children, you have an answer that you want to give to them. And usually I have a question I want to share with them. And my writing the story is my way of answering the question for myself. And then I'm always thrilled that children, it makes sense to children. Author Visits is a production of Mountain Lake PBS. For more information about the authors and their books, head to our website at mountainlake.org.